where she's recovering from surgery. Uh, but if the princess's two-week-long stay in hospital wasn't the only health news as matched by behind the palace gates yesterday. Mm -hmm. Within hours, and quite a surprise, it was announced that the king would be heading to a hospital uh, himself this week. Yeah, here with the latest is this morning's royal editor, Camilla Tomini, and GP Dr Nigat. Morning. 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 Thank you for joining us. Um, now, two royal health stories. Um, they did break within one hour and 25 minutes between each other. It was a bit crazy yesterday. Yeah, what, so what we got the first on? announcement at 2 p.m. That was from Kensington Palace. And it was a bit like a bolt from the blue because only earlier in the week, aides had been discussing the schedule ahead yeah. and going to put out some engagements for, for both the Prince and the Princess of Wales. And then, obviously, we got this statement saying that she had undergone abdominal surgery on Tuesday at the London Clinic, as you say. Um, but it seems like it is major surgery. And, obviously, Dr Nigat can comment more on that. But for her to be in hospital for 10 to 14 days and then face a recuperation period at home, which will probably take her up to Easter, yeah. does seem to be quite a lot of time off. And equally, we understand that Prince William will be taking some time off too to look after his wife and to look after their Lovely. three children, who, let's not forget, are all 10 and under, 10, yeah. 8 and 5. Um, they've always felt the need to put immediate family before the family firm. You know, they want to be hands-on parents. They always organise jobs so that one of them is there for bedtime. And therefore, I think William's decided that he needs to be at Kate's side and to put the sort of royal role on the back burner for a while. Then, 90 minutes later, to get the announcement about the king undergoing a, a procedure next week for this enlarged prostate, which I know lots of people watching this, they'll be familiar with that. You know, yeah. I've got relatives who have had these... Uh, conditions um, and had to have them treated. They have said it's benign because obviously we think of men of his age, he's 75 and prostates, and we think of cancer. Mm -hmm. In both cases, actually, the, the C word has been ruled out. Uh, they haven't specified exactly what Kate is undergoing, and in the fullness of time, maybe she'll want to speak about that, but that's up to her, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that's quite important, isn't it? I mean, it's, you know, obviously, she's a very important person, she's a very important figure in our society, so we, 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 we talk about what's happening to her, but at the same time respecting her privacy. So, 14 days, Dr Nagas, that's, a, you know, a recovery period. I mean, natural. the thing is, is that um, I don't want to speculate on whether that's a natural timeline or not. At the end of the day, I think that um, every individual surgery is very specific and the nuances, and so she's under the best of care. But the biggest thing I took away from that is, naturally, you're going to worry. Um, I have children similar age as Kate, and so the first thing is, she wants to get home to her babies mm -hmm. and she wants to recover fully but safely at the same time so that she can go back and doing the job that she absolutely adores. Well, let's talk about the king, because... It, cause... The king's obviously his condition is far more uh, known, and he was far more obviously open about what's what's happening. So, and it's a good opportunity for us to talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, f firstly, Kim, let's start with you. What do we know about his condition so far, and what he's doing? So, we understand that he was examined last week. That they felt that his prostate was enlarged. That he's going to undergo a procedure next week. The palace did make the point that they wanted to make this public to raise awareness, and they described the king as suffering from something that many people of his age yeah. do suffer from. And I think that's a good thing because I think you know when it comes to issues around the prostate and urinary issues and others, you know, men can be a bit of shy about it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think, um, Dr Nigat, I don't know what you think, but if people think that the king has had this examination to diagnose this problem and is now going for treatment, it might hopefully encourage others to come forward. It takes away the stigma because it, it literally no one is immune. And I say to some of my patients because it's such a common problem that as men, as you get older, there are two things that will get bigger. One is your earlobes, and the other is your prostate, and it can affect you. No, your earlobes do not get bigger. They as you do, get older. and oh, your nose, man. unfortunately. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, so when you... men or everyone? Uh, well, women can have a little bit as well, but, but with men, but how big are these guys going to get? <laughs> oh, not too big. Don't worry, they're small at the moment. But with prostate, it can get bigger. We know that 80% uh, of men over the age of sort of 70 will have an enlarged yeah. prostate. So it's a really common condition. But yeah, absolutely, as Camilla was saying, it's breaking that taboo, that stigma to come forward because the amount of men that put up with the symptoms is vast. And I'm, usually I get somebody who comes into my surgery because their other half or their loved one or their daughter or their missus has made them come through the door to come and see the GP. Mm. So what is a prostate? Let's, let's strip it right back. Yeah. What, why does it get bigger as we get older and what's its function? The prostate is part of the male reproductive um, system. It's uh, part of the seminal vesicles, it's part of the penis and also part of the testicles as well. And as you can see, it sits just below the bladder in front of the rectum and it's surrounded by the urethra. So the urethra is a tube that's coming out for us allowing to pee. Mm -hmm. And the prostate just gets naturally bigger as we age. Like uh, some of our other pieces, bits of our body, 
can do. The problem that happens if it gets too big is it can block the urethra, so the tube that's coming out of the bladder and, and stop the bladder flow or the urine flowing out of, and that can have a whole range of symptoms. So symptoms from, say, starting very early on, feeling that your bladder isn't emptying properly. It can feel that you're getting hesitancy as well. So you're standing over the pan and you want to pee and you can't pee or feeling that um, you are also getting increased frequency of urine throughout the day and at night time. So something known as nocturia. So you're getting up at night time to have a wee and that could be more than a couple of times. And also what you can also notice is that um, you're getting sort of straining or a weak flow. So your urine isn't the strength that it used to be. Yeah. Those are the indicators that actually your prostate is getting bigger. Gotcha. So just to make it clear, there is a big difference between the king's condition and, and prostate cancer. There is a big condition, and this is where I would make a real plea to anybody watching this. If you have any of those symptoms that I've just said, there is the International Prostate Scoring System, and you can just Google that, and you can go through the symptoms, because actually it's the quality of life that we're looking at. It happens ever so slowly, so men put up with the symptoms. But with prostate cancer, if you ever notice blood in your wee or wee in your semen, that's not normal, and you need to get that checked out. Fatigue or feeling that you're tired without any unknown reason or weight loss for un unexplained reasons. But unfortunately, the symptoms can so overlap with each other. So we use a test called a PSA. Um, and I was speaking to a consultant urologist yesterday about this because a PSA can be quite contentious. We don't have men's health is just as bad at managed as uh, women's health and the research and the data isn't so great. But the PSA test can give you an indicator. So if you're getting those symptoms, we do a scoring system called the IPSS. And then from that, have a conversation with your doctor about getting a PSA test. And my consultant colleague was saying to me, I'd rather that somebody had the PSA test if they were having symptoms than not have it, because in that way we can rule out prostate cancer very Camilla, quickly. Do you, Camilla, do you think the palace have been so uh, forthcoming with, with the condition to raise awareness? I think definitely that's a factor. And also we were kind of questioning the timing of both announcements yeah. yesterday. And I'm wondering whether Buckingham Palace made this a mission about the king to almost take the pressure off sure. some of the scrutiny around the Princess of Wales. I mean, yeah. she's 42, she's a young woman, it's going to spark speculation and talk. And I think, obviously, her priority is getting better for the sake of her and her three children. Sure. And that's why, sort of, William is playing that covering role. But, it, I mean, this does remind us of the perils of the yeah. slimmed-down monarchy. You know, we've got three of the four senior royals now out for an indeterminate period. Uh, with the Queen, they've announced some engagements for her next week, sort of holding the fort for a while while they get through these health problems. But, hey, look, they might be royal and they might wear the crown, but they're as infallible as the rest of mm -hmm. us. Can you imagine uh, uh, having surgery and then having the world's media? I know. At, at your front... <laughs> well, well, there was when a media... When you're trying to recover. There was a media facility outside the London Clinic and, of course, there's a need and an interest and that's why this, they release this information. We have historically heard when royals particularly have been admitted to hospital. We remember the late Queen Mother getting the fishbone uh, caught in her throat. We know that the Queen underwent surgery on her knee. Mm -hmm. We know when the Duke of Edinburgh himself went into the Edward VII Hospital. In fact, we know that Kate had that problem suffering from hypertension paremesis when she was pregnant with the three children and she needed to be hospitalised and put on a drip. So they give us some information and as a journalist, obviously, it's always working on a sort of wanting to know basis. But actually, when it comes to private medical matters, it's entirely up to Kate. She might not want to say anything further about this and that is her prerogative. Equally, she may want to, in the fullness of time, speak a bit more about what's gone on. Do you think that's, that shows how the royal family are evolving in terms of how much they're sharing and so forth. Well, I thought it was quite sort of a modern approach to take, to not only say that both of these conditions have happened and they're undergoing this treatment, but also to make the point that William was going to down tools and be with his wife. I mean, back in the day, yeah. you would have not expected that sort of approach because, you know, the job comes sure. first. But we're, we're seeing, particularly William and Kate, as a sort of new generation of much more modern royalty where they want to be hands-on and they want to be there for their children. And I think most people watching this will be thinking that's probably his right priority to make sure that the woman he loves is OK. Oh. And it humanises the situations because yeah. there are so many patients of mine who do exactly the same thing. They will down tools, they will recuperate, they'll take them time out for themselves, have their privacy as well, because at the end of the day, she's got three little babies that she wants to go home to and give them a massive cuddle, and we yeah. just we really wish her the best. And the recovery time, is it 14 days, is it, Camilla? Well, they're saying that she will be in hospital in the London Clinic for 10 to 14 days, yeah. and then she'll have an extended period of recuperation back at Windsor. They live at Adelaide Cottage these days on the Windsor estate, and they're basically saying that they think that 
all engagements for her are going to be off until Easter. They were due to travel to Rome. They had a couple of international trips on the books, but international travel has understandably been shelved for the time being. Oh, well, we it's, wish Kate... It's, it's but... funny, though, isn't it? It's like, you know, the nation's, like, first family and so yeah. forth, but, like, her medical condition is none of our business. No, no. it isn't. Not... Although I think they recognise that she's such a popular figure in public life that people will be concerned and want to know. And, actually, I think the news has only prompted a sort of outpouring of... Um, Kindness empathy. towards sure. her and, and empathy, empathy and, and to will her on and will her better. Yeah, yeah, Dr. we Nick, wish Kate well. Um, but Dr. Dr. Nick, sorry, to yeah. but before we go, because, uh, you know, uh, some of my mates are getting yeah. to this age. Yes. And, uh, and our parents are definitely getting to this age. Our father's getting to this age. So if people are thinking, you know what, some of that's resonating with me, is it, a con is it getting in touch with your GP? Is that what you should be doing now? Definitely. The first thing is, I would say, is do that score, so the International Prostate Score, because that gives you an idea of where it is. But it's more than that. It's, is it in, are the symptoms impacting your quality of life? And having that conversation with the GP. Getting a simple routine blood test would be an idea, but we look at mostly the holistic view. So it's like if your alcohol intake is high, cut that down, stop smoking. Looking at your weight maintenance as well, looking at your toileting habits, and also really noticing, is this really something that is um, a problematic to you? And that's where age doesn't really play a factor because we always say 50 and above is when you would contact the doctor if you had a prostate fam yeah. or family history and we know that in black caribbean men the risk of prostate cancer is one in four for so for them please never put up with the symptoms and the treatment plan that we would offer a gp is usually we start with lifestyle holistic things and I know that um, the king is very a huge champion of complementary mm -hmm. medicine, so I'm sure that that's something that he would have considered. Then there's medication that can help smooth, uh, relax the smooth muscle around the prostate and increase the uh, urine output as well, uh, or medicine that can actually shrink the prostate as well. And then it would be really a surgical option, because this is a really, really gradual condition, this enlargement of the prostate that happens. And surgery, there are a number of options. There's TERP, so transurethral resection of the prostate, where we shave or cut away from the prostate. There's newer ones now called HOLEP, which is like a laser. It's really, really brilliant. And the recovery from that is fantastic with lower risk factors and low, uh, low uh, complications as well. And the person's up and about within a, a couple of days um, and then back to whatever they want to do uh, in, uh, yeah. in regards to the recovery from the surgery. So right. thank you. Um, it is something that I would say, please don't put up with the symptoms. Go and see your doctor. Thanks. Thank you, Dr. Nigga. And thank you, Camilla. Nice thank to you. see you. Yeah. Thank Send you. them our love. <laughs> we'll do, Josie. She's got the hotline. Yeah. Fire yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the press office. I will you send do. those good we wishes. Do. We, know, we know you've got connections. <laughs> <laughs>